Good morning. Happy Father's Day. So, so glad that you are here with us. Thanks for joining us here in person. Thanks for joining us online for those of you that are there. This morning we have the honor and privilege to dedicate a child to the Lord. This is a a great joy that we get to partake in. And so I'm going to invite Logan and Charity and Phoenix Alderson to come and join us up front here. And uh, what a special day uh, to be able to celebrate with the two of you. Uh, You can come up here. You can go on that side. Yeah. That side. All right. There we go. So this is Logan. This is Charity. And this is Phoenix. And Phoenix was born on March 29th of 22. And so a little over a year old. And, uh, and so we're so thankful that you two, or your three, are part of the church. I remember when you guys first came, and she was just tiny. And, uh, and so what a joy to be able to dedicate him this morning. I'm going to have, I believe, Charity introduce family, friends that are here today with you. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? I'll get you on here. There, you should be good. How about now? Okay. Um, we have Papa and Nanny, so Grandma and Grandpa, and then my grandparents, Grandma Sue and Grandpa Frank, all here for him. That's outstanding. Let's welcome them. Thank you for being here. And so Phoenix is named, I always ask, you know, the, the meaning of names, and uh, you shared with me that, that's right, you like the applause. Let's do that again, ready? You want some applause? There we go. There you go. It's going to be like the new, there we go. <laughs> Maybe we entered into something that uh, we shouldn't have there. <laughs> He's like, people, come on. <laughs> so Phoenix is named after Logan's brother who passed away uh, just a year before Logan was born, and uh, they said that he's really been the symbol uh, to Logan, this, this symbol of a phoenix, which is a bird rising from the ashes. I love this imagery. And has been this connection that he's had um, towards Phoenix here. And uh, Phoenix's middle name is Ray. It's a family name passed on uh, from his dad side. And Charity wrote this too, and I love this description. Is our son is a brand new chapter in our lives that we get to build fresh and together. He's our crazy, sweet little boy and brings a ray of sunshine wherever he goes. Absolutely, the ray of sunshine, right? He's like, people, I'm sunshine here. And when I hear your description and and we see just his love um, here is that uh, words that are often connected to Phoenix as well as rebirth and transformation. Those are some other words that gets used in this imagery. And so the verse that I chose for him is uh, really a verse about transformation. It's a verse based on, you know, rebirth in Jesus is do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And we've talked about this recently, is that it's God's will that is, we have revealed to us. And, uh, and so that he would be transformed by that. And so we're going to pray that over him in just a, a short while. Now, the two of you stand here, like many of the parents in this room have stood here before, uh, much like uh, Mary and Joseph, who brought Jesus, and Hannah, who brought Samuel, as a dedication to the Lord. And so, yes, we're dedicating Phoenix, but as we always remind parents, it's a, it's a renewal for the two of you, a rededication for the two of you, and that it wouldn't be um, something that Jesus isn't something that you just say one time and like, hey, Phoenix, you know Jesus, you're good, Um, but rather it'd be something that would be taught and continue to be caught in your household over the years to come. And a verse we always share is from Deuteronomy 6. It says, these commands I give to you today are to be on your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead, write them on the door frames of your houses and your gates. And so everywhere you go is just this continual reminder of the word of imparting that not only in the two of you, but into him as well. And so this morning, there's a few um, charges that I want to say to you to ask you to agree to as we dedicate Phoenix is first, do you soundly dedicate yourselves to raising Phoenix in the nurture and the counsel of the Lord? Excellent. And will you reject the ways of Satan, reject the ways of the world, and reject the ways of our own sinful nature as you teach and train him? Absolutely. Do you believe in the Old and New Testaments or the Holy Scriptures and therefore teach Phoenix God's way in both word and deed? Excellent. And the last one. Do you this day solemnly dedicate Phoenix to God that he may live for the Lord all the days of his life? Excellent. Good. Well, we're going to pray over him, and 
What do you think? Are we going to try this? Yeah. Are we going to try this? All right, Phoenix, come here, buddy. All right, hey, we'll hang out here. Hi, bud. Hi. We tried this once before, didn't we? Yeah, I love this look he's giving me, right? He's like, who is this guy? And I'm standing with these people. So let's pray. Oh, actually, let's invite family to come forward. We're going to pray over family. We're going to go down here. Mom and Dad's coming right behind us. So if family, if you come and join us, I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing. I took you too soon. You're doing awesome, buddy. So there's Dad. There's Mom. There's the people. You see all the people? There we go. Would you come and surround him? And uh, you can lay hands on him if you so choose. Oh, you want to go see him? There's family. There's your family. All right, let's pray. Church, join in. with Jesus, we love you. We're so grateful for the life of Phoenix. God, I thank you for the work that you have done in both Logan and Charity. And God, I thank you for the joy that Phoenix is to them. God, we pray that as the scripture said that God, Phoenix would not conform to the patterns of this world, but he would continue to be transformed by you, Jesus that your spirit would fill him, God, that one day he would say yes to following you, and God, that you would work in and through him, God, that he would be one that carries forth the good news, God, of this change, this transformation that happens in each one of us, God, as we say yes to you. So Lord, I pray that you would fill him, God, with your spirit, with your joy, with your peace, with your patience, with your goodness, God, just everything of who you are. We pray for Logan and Charity as they raise him, the family that surrounds him. Jesus, that they would speak words of life, God, that they would, be, they would be pictures and symbols of hope and, and encouragement to him as he walks throughout life. And so, Jesus, we trust you with them. God, we trust you with this family. And this day, uh, as Logan and Charity stood here, God, together we all dedicate him to you. Lord, may you do a mighty work in him. And so we pray these things, God, for your glory and your name, and hereby dedicate him to you. We pray this in Jesus' strong and powerful name. Amen. 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 Wow, let's, yeah, round of applause. Let's clap. People, people are clapping again. Yay. Yay. I'm going to give you back to mom and dad here. Sweet boy. We've got a Bible for you and something here. You can stay right there. I'll bring it down to you. So we want to give you these just as a reminder of the word of God and the centrality of that in his life as he grows. Thank you. All right, let's give him a round of applause. God bless you. So. Sometimes you just got to make your own fun. And this mom came up with a doozy. Posted a sign in her yard and she asked her neighbors to do the silliest walk they could. And she caught it on her doorbell camera. Wow, did they rise to the challenge. Nothing strange happens when people walk in front of this house outside Detroit. <laughs> just about every person who stops by breaks out in a silly walk. Why? Because of this sign Liz Cotto posted in her front yard that reads, you have now entered the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Silly Walks. Commence walking silly immediately. Since everyone can go out walking still right now, why don't we make it enjoyable? <laughs> you may recall that the Ministry of Silly Walks is a classic Monty Python sketch from way back. <laughs> Each walk is captured on her doorbell camera. This family of four is out on their daily walk. Do it. Yeah, let's do it. They break out into a conga line. Check out this dinosaur shuffling by. This girl, she does the Macarena. And these sisters, they're off to see the wizard. All right, so when you walk out of here today, I'm expecting some, like, you know, just uh, different walks walking out as you're out of here. And today, the reason you saw that is we are going to talk about a phrase that Paul uses in the first uh, chapter of Colossians. We've been walking through this series greater. And he uses this phrase, walk worthy. If you're in the NIV, it says to live uh, this life. And what we're talking about walking worthy here today. And today is Father's Day. It is a day that we celebrate fathers, and, uh, and it is a day that um, we, you may have many different plans, you may have no plans, you may have high joy about this, you may have hurt about this, whatever it may be, but something I've noticed about Mother's Day and Father's Day, especially in a church setting, goes something like this. On Mother's Day, it is something like, you are precious, you are loved, you are worthy, you are wonderful, you are so grateful for you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, just keep, just, you're great, you know, on and on, right, right, all this love. And then for Father's Day, it is try harder, dads, right? 
this is some of what I've experienced in the past on Father's Day, and maybe you've had the same thing, where you get this really just challenging, convicting type of word. But my goal here today is, uh, maybe there's some of that, but the point is, is that we would be reminded that we're called to walk worthy, and that we're empowered by the Spirit of God to walk with Him, that we're given tools to walk with Him. And it is so much more of a response from a loving Father than some sort of demand from this dictatorial type of God that we're afraid of. It is this loving connection and relationship with our Heavenly Father. And so that passage that I was referring to just a moment ago is from Colossians 1, verse 10, which says this, Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. And so these are things that, again, that we walk in response to what the Lord has done. And, and when we walk in that response, we please him. We bear fruit that the Spirit brings up and out of us. It's what the Spirit does in us. And we increase in the knowledge of God as we walk with him. And so he makes us fruitful. He gives us the increase of the knowledge of him. Now on this Father's Day, there's a number of different ways that we could pause and recognize and, uh, and honor dads, which um, after service, there's donuts. Hopefully you got some on the way in, get some donuts on the way out. Whether you're a dad or not, there's donuts for everyone. Otherwise, staff is just going to have a lot of donuts tomorrow. Um, so please eat them on the way out. But what I uh, would love to have is maybe one, two, three um, people share uh, an, an honoring of a dad, a reflection as a dad, uh, a way that you want to speak and honor maybe your dad is maybe something that your dad poured into you, whether that's a, um, uh, someone who was your biological or maybe someone who stepped in or an adoptive dad, whatever it may be, um, that you just take a moment and you'd speak life um, toward uh, maybe your dad. Is there anyone that would be willing to do that? I know it's hard in front of people. Anyone? Anyone? Jimmy. Okay. So. You should be good. It's on? No, maybe not. All right. Black one. All right. So. There's no one back there. <laughs> See, the, the moment he steps out, it's a. Uh, Johnny's getting you. All right, try again. Hello? As a, there we go. Thanks, Johnny. Okay. The, You're good. All right. So I was, I was adopted when I was four years old. My, my grandfather raised me, but I always called him my dad, and he was always the greatest. My biological father, I met him back in, back in 2017. Mm. He was in the Navy mm. back in the 90s, but him and my mother, they, they just they had a rough life. Mm -hmm when they, before my sisters and I were given mm -hmm. up for adoption, but I was happy to meet him. Mm -hmm. I was happy to, to be raised by my grandfather all these years, and he's just the greatest. He just retired back in September mm -hmm. from working at Sack Rider Farms, but he will always be my dad, and he'll always be the greatest. Excellent. Thanks, Jimmy. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. Round of applause. Thankful for people that step in. Someone else, the way you want to honor your dad or speak life. Who's got it? Don't be shy. It's like the auction. I saw two hands like move towards faces, and I'm like, oh, almost. Nope. All right, someone else. All right, there we go. Thanks, Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica Jarrett, and um, I've been blessed very much by my father. He currently is at a rehab facility. He had a massive heart attack about a month and a half ago, and we're still trying to see if he's going to pull through. Um, but a few years ago, I wrote a little letter on Father's Day just describing that. Um, I'm thankful because my view and relationship of God um, was formed by my view and relationship with him, because uh, I knew that he loved me unconditionally would speak life um, and beauty and affirmation over me. Uh, and one of the most valuable things, seeing him, he was a salesman for doors and windows and would go into inner city Detroit, 
we'd go on vacations to Tennessee or wherever with um, whether it was poverty or um, different socioeconomic status. And no matter who he spoke to, um, he treated every person as a valuable human being and would make them seen and heard and worthy and valuable. And it was just another thing that I saw, like God sees everyone in this light. Um, and if you could please pray for my father and my mother, his name is Alex and her name is Laura. Um, we're figuring out our next course of action today with Dad's um, future. So, thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Appreciate it. Would you join me for prayer? We're going to pray for Alex and Laura. Jesus, uh, Lord, you are the God who gives all wisdom and insight. Uh, Lord, I thank you for... Um, the words that Jessica just spoke of affirmation over her dad, Alex, and God, I think you just I keep having the image of him being baptized here just not too long ago and having tears filling his eyes um, as he professed you, as he um, um, acknowledged you through baptism, his salvation. God, I pray wisdom over uh, Greg and Jessica and family today as they make decisions Lord, for um, all who have walked through seasons like this and are walking through seasons, we pray your comfort, your peace, your wisdom. And uh, Jesus, I thank you, um, God, that you are with us. So Lord, we love you. We're grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to thank both of you for sharing. And, um, and we pray for uh, all uh, dads in all different seasons of life, uh, those Again, who grieve, um, who rejoice, those you're missing, um, those you just look back and you just you question and, and have um, all sorts of different emotions. We recognize the reality, and um, there's a prayer that I prayed. I'll post it uh, later this week. I prayed in first service is that from the Psalms, it says, even if my father abandons me, the Lord will hold me close. And then two, we're talking about how Paul wrote, uh, kneeling before the Father, uh, the Father God, the ultimate Father, who we may know his love. And so we're thankful that we serve a God that draws near to us. And this God um, is a God that continually pursues us as followers of him. In Colossians chapter 1, we're going to read here shortly, uh, we see a letter that is uh, written to a church that Paul never visited. Uh, but Epaphras is uh, someone who planted the church, learned from Paul, and there's a lot of good things happening in the church. Paul affirms that by saying, hey, in your church there is faith and there is love and there is hope that is unfolding. And these are core principles of what Paul has been teaching on and continues to teach on and he writes. And he says, ultimately, the end goal for Paul is that there would be maturity as followers, that this church would be mature, that we would be mature. And so in Colossians chapter 1, we're going to start in verse 9, and normally I read from the NIV, we, just for the consistency here, but today I want to read from the ESV because of the phrase walk worthy, is that I really just uh, captured that idea of walking today, is to walk with Jesus. And so from Colossians chapter 1 verse 9, it says this, and so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transformed us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And so in this passage, we need to first acknowledge that this is a prayer. Paul is saying, I'm praying for you, church. I'm praying for you. We have the opportunity to pray too. Paul, greatest missionary, greatest evangelist, wrote much of the New Testament. He prayed for the churches. This is something that we need to all be doing is praying for the church, praying for each other, praying for followers, we see that Jesus' disciples prayed. We see that Jesus prayed. And so if Paul and his, Jesus' disciples and Jesus are praying, we too should be praying. And what did Paul pray for the church? Verse 9 says that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. How many of you have ever said, I wish I knew the will of God? I have. 
I've been like, I wish I knew what God was saying. I wish I knew the will. I wish I knew what to do in this situation. I really want to understand. Well, I want to tell you that we can know the will of God, that you can know the will of God. So often what we think is that God's will is hidden, and it's just far enough away that like, we have to do all these things in order to know the will of God. That if we just discover it, if we just do all these different things, then we'll know the will of God. But God's will is very accessible. God's will is right before us, and he has given it to us every single day, every moment we have opportunity to know God's will, including in that situation that you may be processing right now. So today, to know God's will, we need to know God. And so three ways that God has allowed us to know him and therefore know his will, we're going to talk about today. And the first one is this, is that knowing his will, knowing God, we have to know the word. See, there's a big difference about knowing God and knowing about God. There's a difference of knowing God's word and knowing about God's word. God's word is a gift to us, and it is the primary will that we know how we know the will of God. It may be in your hands. It may be in the seat next to you. It may be on your phone. It may be on the shelf at home. God's will is right there within your grasp. And God's word is consistent. It's powerful. It's unchanging. It is life-giving. It is active. Now, the Israelites, when they were wandering in the desert, God provided every single day something for them. What did he provide for them? Manna. Someone said it out there. It's manna. Every single day he would give manna. They would go out and collect it, and they would have it for the day. Now, there's people who collected more because they're thinking ahead. If I do it today, I don't have to do it tomorrow. What would happen to the manna that was collected for the next day? Spoils. It's gone. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says, give us this day our daily, what? Bread. Our daily bread. Just like the Lord provided in the wilderness enough for that day to feed them, not too much, not too little, enough. Jesus taught us to pray the same thing. Give us today our daily bread. Give us enough for today. Every single day we have the opportunity to know and hear from God. This daily manna. And God desires to speak to us every single day. Now, there's something that has happened over the years that I used to be really amazed about. Now, I've just gone to the, the attitude of gratitude, of just saying thank you. You would come in, or we'd have lunch, or coffee, or email, or call, or whatever it is. We'd be having a conversation, and then all of a sudden, what I read that morning in Scripture would just drop into my mind, and it fit perfectly in the conversation. And I used to be like, what? This is so cool, right? I didn't have that reaction. I was just still listening, right? But inside, I'm just like, this is perfect. And then just share the scripture and just be like, wow, God, this is awesome. This happens now, but it's just this gratitude. And the same thing for you. Be amazed when you jump into the word of God and you read the word of God, and then somehow it connects into your day. Hmm, there's something to this, this daily bread, this manna that God is speaking into your life. Oh yeah, that's right, that's what I read this morning. Oh yeah, this is what God implanted in my heart. This is what it is. And it's been a really beautiful too, is Joanna's been sharing with, with me things that she has been reading as she's been processing decisions work-related. I was like, what is this? What do I do? She's like, hey, look at this. This is deeply encouraging. God speaks to us. We want to know the will of God. We know God's heart. It's revealed primarily here in the word of God. So we know it through the word, but we also know it through his voice. Now his voice can come off the pages of scripture, yes, but his voice is through prayer. Consider these words from scripture. Psalm 145 says this, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Isaiah said, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And Jesus told us in John 10, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. This, uh, among many other passages of scripture, show us the heart of God wanting to speak to us through his word and through prayer. This may be an audible voice. It may be a still small voice. It may be an impression on your heart and your mind. It may be something that you're reading scripture, you're praying, and just a word is highlighted. 
she's afraid sometimes like highlighting in the spirit, like the spirit of God takes a highlighter and says, hey, I want you to pay attention to this. I want you to notice this. It is about us listening. Recently, I went to the eye doctor and had my eyes checked out. And uh, a day or two ago, uh, I was in another room and my lovely daughter, who may or may not be sitting in this room, she, uh, she said something to me and, and then she walked into the room and she said, hey, Dad, I know you went to the eye doctor, but did they happen to check your hearing too? <laughs> I was like, no, as a matter of fact, they didn't. This is all just comment of, Dad, listen to me. But in that scenario and in other scenarios, I was in a different room. The fan was on. There was music on in the house. And I heard her voice, but I couldn't understand what was being said. And I love that she drew near, and we were in the same space. And I moved a little bit towards her and listened and focused. And I wondered how often that's true of God, is that God is speaking to us, but we have all sorts of noise around us, right? Things going on, our mind is going through things, we're processing, we we just have this noise. And it takes a moment where God is drawing near to us, and you turn and you look and you have that conversation to hear him cutting out all the noise around us, the slowing, this pausing, this taking time to listen. And part of that, too, is hearing God's voice is to stop going with the shopping list prayer. What I mean by that is that, dear God, thank you for this day. Now I need this, 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 and this. This person needs this, 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 this. Heal this, this, this. Work on this, 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 this. Amen. Right? I've prayed like that, and you have too. What if we stopped and We paused and we listened and we reflected on some of the scripture that maybe we have read that day or maybe we listened to just that impression in our heart and our mind. God wants us to know his will. He wants us to know him and we know it by his word and by his voice through prayer. And then third, we know God's will and God through his people. Now this is complicated, I get it. Because Christians are messy, right? I'm messy, you're messy, whether you admit it or not. And, and we're like, uh, I love Jesus, but I don't really like his people, right? A lot of people feel that way. I feel that way sometimes too, is that we're messy. But we were designed for community. We were designed for connection. And we can't have this just me and my Jesus type of mentality, We can't have this, I'm just doing church on my own, just me and Jesus on my own, I'm good. We're designed for community. You need community. You need it here. You need it in smaller environments where you can be known and know other people, where people can ask you questions that are hard. And consider what the author of Hebrews said, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. So why do we meet together? Well, it's for love and good deeds and encouragement. It's essential for us as followers of Christ to be together. It's essential for us to have counsel from other mature believers. It is essential for iron to sharpen iron, and that's painful at times. It's essential for us to detest something maybe we believe or we're walking in. I mean, do you have someone in your life where you're like, well, I'm, I'm processing this or I'm gonna make this decision, what do you think? Do you have anyone that's mature spiritually that can say, you know what? We need, to, we need to talk about this or let's pray about this or have you considered this? Is there someone that pushes back on you in love that asks you hard questions? Are you willing to expose yourself to correction. See, knowing the will of God and knowing God is through his word, through his voice, and through his people. And in Colossians 1.9, Paul said, and so from that day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Spiritual wisdom, spiritual understanding. There's a difference between worldly wisdom and spiritual understanding. There's a difference between worldly wisdom and spiritual wisdom. 
James, the brother of Jesus, said, hey, there's a measuring stick. I mean, ultimately, it's Jesus, but there's a measuring stick of wisdom. And he said this in James chapter 3. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, and then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial, and sincere. These are the measuring sticks. Is it worldly wisdom or is it spiritual godly wisdom? You can go through this checklist of a decision or an attitude or an action or whatever it may be. Because remember, this is all about walking with the Lord. Like walking with the Lord, allowing him to fill you, to change you, to refine you. Saying, hey, these are opportunities for us in these ways to walk with the Lord. In Colossians 1.10, it says this. It says, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Why? Well, it's fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing in the knowledge of God. When we walk with him, we increase in that knowledge. When we draw near to him, we increase in that way. I need a couple of volunteers. I'm not going to make you come forward or say anything. I need a volunteer from this side. Someone. Not everyone at once. Thank you, Charity. All right. This is for you. Don't show your neighbors. Logan can see it. What I want you to do is I want you to write down what you see. Just briefly write down what you see. I need someone here. Thank you, Kirsten. <laughs> Renee, you looked panicked for a moment when I said thank you. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I just stepped on your foot. All right. I need someone from the middle just to write down what you see there. You can describe it, whatever it may be. Who's going who's gonna to describe, right? All the way over there. All right. All right. Do, 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 do. Here we go. All right. So just go ahead and take a minute to write down what you see on there. You can describe it in whatever words, phrases, whatever it may be. That's that image. And so when we walk with the Lord, we are knowing his word, we're knowing his voice, we're knowing his people. And Paul said we take captive every thought. So what we think about, what we process, we take captive in every possible way. It's this walking in a worthy manner. Now what we can do here, this is maybe where the guilt comes in, right, is this try harder mentality. Walk worthy. I hear that and I'm like, ah, I fall so short of God. I can't do that. This is just this thing of how do I work harder? It seems impossible. But really what it is is it's our outward life matching what we're convicted of inwardly. And as we've been talking about the last number of weeks, is that it's not about our effort, our doing more. Rather, it is about the Spirit of God changing us. Us saying, God, I'm surrendered to you. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. I want to walk in your ways. You know what? There's times where you're walking along and you're going to trip and you're going to fall. One of the things that I was just uh, talking recently with um, someone I was in youth group with, and our youth pastor would say a a sign of a, a follower of Jesus is one who falls down, it's going to happen, but gets back up again. Because we can stay down, but rather it's getting back up again. And so it is this walk with Jesus that lifts us up, that, that carries us forward as we walk with him. All right, how are my three doing out there? You got your descriptions? Where are they? You good, Sharon? All right. All right, there we go. I'll take that. Oh. All right, it's all good. Thank you for the descriptions there. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Who'd I give it to over here? Oh, Kirsten. All right. Thank you much. I appreciate it. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask everyone to get a picture in their mind as I describe what they wrote, okay? So I want you to paint this image in your mind. Ready? So here, this image is colors, faces, curved lines, loud eyeshadow, Egyptian art, question mark, Different perspectives and watchful eyes. Uh, By the way, these three images are exactly the same, okay? So you got this image in your mind? I have no confidence in that answer there. All right. All right. Here we go. Next person said, colorful faces, eyes, confusion. I believe about the piece, not necessarily all of us, maybe us. Unique art, question mark. Okay, does that refine the image? 
All right, the last one says this. Faces, eyes, noses, lips, vibrant colors, beauty, and art. All right, everyone have a clear picture in their mind. I mean, there were words that described this image. You should have this clear picture. This is, this is what you're taking in, right? Okay, got a picture? All right, this is what you had in your mind, right? Anyone have that exact image in their mind? No, okay, uh, no, unless you saw it earlier or you were here, right? We had a description. We had three individuals tell you about this picture. I mean, they had good words. There was faces, right? Colorful faces. There's curved lines there. I don't know about Egyptian art, but uh, there's different perspectives. There's eyes, there's beauty, there's vibrancy. We should know exactly what this is, right? No, why not? See, an image changes when you have it before you. You can have someone describe an image Describe a person, describe a situation. Until you encounter it yourself, it doesn't come alive. Until you lay your eyes on it, those words have very different meaning. Paul, when he prays for the church, when he prays for them to walk worthy, he's saying, encounter God. Don't let someone else tell you about God. Don't let other people's perspectives and things they add on there He's saying, you have the opportunity to encounter him yourself through the word and through prayer and through his people. And when you walk with him, when you walk worthy, it's fully pleasing to him. And what he does is he bears fruit in you and he increases the knowledge. Continues down in verse 11 by saying, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So we have this encouragement. Paul's saying, I'm praying for you. And you're called to walk worthy. And this is what God does for us. We walk with him. He strengthens us. What we just read. Builds endurance, patience, joy, gratitude, internal, eternal inheritance. He delivers us into the kingdom of Jesus. He redeems us. He forgives us. This is what God does for you. You walk with him. And he's saying, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. James, he says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should what? Ask God. God. And then God who gives what? Generously, without finding fault. Ask God through his word, through prayer, through his people. He gives generously yes to you. Yes to you. Because some of you just go to this of like, ah, no, God doesn't want to talk to me. If you knew what I did, if you knew how I thought, if you know how I act, God's like, you know what? Seek me. You're going to find me. I'm going to give generously without fault. And it's going to be given to you. Seek me. Walk with me. I was just saying, let me, let me refine you. Our job is to receive. There's a story that Jesus told in Scripture, and it's in Mark 4. You can read it later. So often it's used for evangelism and thinking of salvation. It's a story of the farmer who went out and sowed seed. And when you sowed seed, you just threw it. Just let it fly everywhere. This is the generosity of the God we serve who's like, I'm here. Here's my love. Here's my presence. Here's my peace. But as Jesus tells his people, He talks about it falling on a rocky path or falling on the path or falling amongst thorns where worries and desires of wealth just choke it out. And we all have these realities that we hear the word of God even today. You're hearing today and you're going to walk away and there's going to maybe be a worry that's going to be like, I can't hear this. I don't believe that. Or it's just going to fall. It's going to be shallow and the enemy will pull it away. 
But the point of this is, is that there is soil that is good, that is rich, that's ready to receive. It's here I am, God. Here I am. I'm gonna accept your word when I not only hear it here, but when I read it, when I pray all during the week, when I am amongst God's people asking questions and and talking about things and, and learning and growing and being refined, when I open myself up to the word, to the voice of God and his people. And so as we wrap up, I want you to consider two different questions that are here. First and foremost, the most important question we start with is, have I invited Jesus to be my savior by confessing my sin and my need for him? Have I placed my trust in the finished work of Jesus that he did on the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection? And will I today begin my walk with him as both savior and Lord of my life? This is a a moment where you say, I'm following after you. I confess my sin. You are savior. You are the one that forgives I may not have it all understood or figured out, but I trust you. I believe and I'm confessing it today that you are my savior, that you are taking my sin. And if you have confessed Jesus and you're following him, in what way or ways is God calling you to open your life to walk with him? How will I surrender to him, to trust and to learn from him? Is it about the word of God, hearing him there, his voice through prayer, or about God's people? What way is God calling me to open my life? And so would you take a moment to prayerfully process and and just ask God to show you what step or steps he may want you to take as you walk with him. What does it mean to walk with him today? What is God impressing? So would you take a moment and then I'll lead us in prayer. Jesus, today we thank you that you hear our prayers, that you know us. Jesus, thank you for those, whether here or online, that may have said yes to you for the very first time. God, I pray a strengthening for them as they walk with you. As they respond to uh, what you did for them on the cross, God, the worthiness, God, that you call us to walk with you. And Jesus, I pray for those here today, too, who... um, just today surrendered before you, may have surrendered before you. God, wanting to walk with you, to hear your voice, to understand you through your word or prayer or people or whatever it may be. And so Jesus, as we walk through this week, God, may you remind us that you go with us, that you are speaking, that you are just scattering yourself and your word and your love around us. May we be receptive in that good soil. Jesus, I thank you for these words that Paul wrote so long ago. I thank you that you are the one that strengthens us. You're the one that calls us to endure and gives us patience and Lord, the inheritance. I thank you that you love us. God, ultimately on this Father's Day, Lord, you are the picture of God, truly that good Father the compassionate and loving father, the father who gives of himself for the good of his children. So Jesus, may we walk in you this week and this day. Lord, you're so good. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.